What's going on guys? It's King Touch Pro and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to create an outro and what an outro is, it's pretty much this. It could be a still or a video depending on what you prefer, but I prefer a still and it's pretty much a picture. And this is what I created here in Photoshop and this is what you guys are going to be making in Photoshop by following along with this tutorial. So let's get started with the tutorial. First of all, we're going to go ahead and go and create a new document. So go to the top, go to file, go to new, and then we're going to go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to just name this outro. And then for the preset, just have it at custom, the width, have that be 1920 by 1080, depending on what size your video is. So mine is 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. The resolution is at 100. You could go 72, 300, depending on how good of the quality you want, but I just keep it at 100. That doesn't really matter though. And then click OK. Your background is going to be locked, so all you have to do is just double click on the layer to unlock it. You could also rename it. I'm going to rename the background layer to uh, BG for background. And then I'm going to choose a dark gray. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and change the foreground color. So click there so just double click on the foreground color and then just choose like a dark gray not completely black but just dark gray and then hold down alter option if you're on a pc and then press delete and that will fill it with black before we actually do anything we're going to press command r or control r if you're on a pc to bring up the rulers and then we're going to go over to view and then we're going to create some guides so we're going to click new guide okay so type in 50 percent click ok for vertical or you can just click and drag this down in the middle just like so and it should snap like that and then that will be um, centered horizontally so once you've done that we're gonna go ahead and create a rectangle so go down to the rectangle tool which should look like this so if you right click it gives you other options make sure you're on the rectangle tool or press U on the keyboard to bring that up and then for the fill we're gonna change that to white 100% white we don't want a stroke, so just make sure that that uh, this square here has a line over it. To do this, there's many ways of doing this, but what I like to do is instead of just you know making a guess and holding shift, because we want to keep this um, proportional to the video, and that's 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720, depending on your video size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy of our background. So just press uh, Command J or Control J if you're on a PC, and you're gonna have this layer here, which is on top. This right here, we're going to change the background color. To do that, click this little arrow here to switch between the foreground and the background color. So now we're going to go ahead and hit Alter Option Delete to fill that with white. And then we're going to go ahead and shrink this down. So press Command T or Control T if you're on a PC to bring up the transformation tool here. And then hold down Shift and then kind of, you know, scale it down to size. So I'm going to move this down just about here. And I'm going to move this like this. It should snap just like that. So instead of making another one and going through the whole process, we're just going to make a copy of our background one layer. So to do that, it's very easy. Hold down Alt or Option and then hold down Shift. Drag that over and hold Shift to keep it so it doesn't move everywhere. And then just drag it to where you think it's kind of centered. Now you have box one, rename that to box two. So now we have two here. And then we want to make sure that this all of this is centered. But before we do that, we want to make sure that the box and box number two is centered. So click this little button here and that will align it vertical just like so. So if this one was like this, you just click this and it will just center them. Go to this one here, which is our background layer. So all of them will be selected. We're going to go ahead and hit this button here, which will center align to this middle horizontal guide. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and push this one here so it's even. Now we have to add our text. So we're not completely finished with this and then we're going to make a group. So we're going to group that together in a folder and then we're going to rename this group to text. Now we're going to go ahead and type in some text. Now you could, you know, you could add in whatever you want. I'm going to be using for the font. It's called Clavica uh, medium, but I'm going to be using bold because you want to use bold letters to to emphasize your point. So I'm going to type in thanks for watching. So now I'm going to move this into the middle here. It should be aligned if you don't know. If you don't know if it's aligned, all you have to do is select the background layer because that's what we're going to be aligning it to. And then press this vertical align here and that will align it vertically. Cool. Now we have to make the text a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. So we're going to select everything. We're going to make this kind of bigger. So something like that. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and hold down alter option on our text layer to make a copy. Hold shift to keep it so it doesn't move everywhere and just leave it like that. 
Now we're gonna uh, change the bottom text, the subtext to something else. Thanks for watching. Leave a like. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Just like that. And then I'm gonna make this much smaller. Something like this. Press Command Enter. So now that we have the subtext vertically aligned, it should look something like this. So it's coming, it's coming together. The text is a little small, so let me make it a little bit bigger. I think 40 is good. Okay, cool. So now we have that. Now we have to add some stroke to the boxes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these boxes together. And we're going to name this boxes. And then we're going to go ahead and double click on our group. And this will just speed up the process. If you guys don't know this, this is just a little quick tip for you. Um, if you have a lot of stuff inside a, a folder and you don't want to edit each single layer, then all you have to do is group the layers that you want to edit all simultaneously into one group and then just double click on the group layer and you should be able to edit all of them together um, much quicker. So this will bring up the layer style window here and from here all you have to do is click stroke and that will add a little stroke around your box there. And then we're going to go ahead and change the color. Right now it's currently set to black, but you can change it to whatever you want. Right now I think any color will do, especially with the background because it's like a dark gray color. So um, I think any color will do. I think I like something like this. Yeah. And then we don't want the position to be outside. We want that to be inside. So it looks like that. And then I think the size should be good. Uh, you can change this to however you want. You can make this even thicker, maybe smaller. I keep it at six because six is a reasonable size. The opacity, of course, you can change this to however you want. I will just keep it at 100%. I think I'll, I'll go red this time. So we're going to go ahead and just go with red. And then I'm going to click OK. Once we have that, we're pretty much good to go. We could, of course, change the background color. Um, all you have to do is make sure you double click on the boxes folder there and then go to color overlay. And I'm going to change this to something like this. You don't want it to, you know, you don't want this to be the same color because then it's going to look like that. You can if you want. It's up to you. Um, but I kind of want to know where I'm actually placing the text. So I'm going to just leave it kind of like, like uh, a little lighter like that. And then click OK. OK. And if you guys want to download this template, I will post it in the description so you guys can download it as well. But I mean, I'm just teaching you guys how to do this so you guys can, can get familiar with the tools. And if you ever wanted to create something like this and you wanted to change it up, then you can, of course, do that too. Um, but I'm just showing you guys how to use all of the tools like the guides, the align tool here up there and uh, using got, uh, layers and customizing them. So so once we've done all of that, we want to go ahead and create the bottom text. So to do that, all we're going to do is go and open up the text folder there. Select um, the subtext, which is leave a like if you enjoyed. We're going to make another copy. So I'll hold down Alter Option, Shift, click and hold down to bring it down just like that. And we're going to change that to subscribe. So well, I cannot type today. Subscribe. Let's go ahead and add another text there. And I'm going to name this. Don't forget to. And then I'm going to make this text a little smaller so it fits like on top right here. Just like that. Of course, you want to make sure that all of this is proportional or kept to proportion, if that makes any sense. So we're going to have to make subscribe a little bit bigger. If you have to zoom in, please do so. Um, it's really helpful just to saying so cool. Don't forget to subscribe. So now we have to add some text to the font. You can, if you want, you don't have to. So I think it's kind of bland. It's kind of boring if it's, you know, if we don't add anything there, but before we do that, we go ahead and add a texture to the background. You could of course add some texture to anything here just to give it some, some style and some design kind of finesse, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to pattern overlay. Jeez, you could do normal or multiply if you want this to be kind of dark. That's not what I want, but I guess here in the pattern, you can pretty much do whatever you want. It's up to you, but I currently don't have the texture, which is kind of a shame. Uh, so I'm going to just click OK. I'm going to just leave it like this for now. I know it looks <laughs> I know it looks really weird, but hey, if you're a girl and you're watching this, then this can be really helpful for you. So. Yeah, we have boxes there, and then because the background is kind of 
pinkish. We're gonna go ahead and change the stroke on the boxes to a lighter like red to like a pinkish color, almost a pink color. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add a drop shadow to the text. So go and select the text folder layer, go ahead and double click on that, go to drop shadow. And then here you should have the blend mode set to multiply the opacity should be around 50%. You don't want this to be too strong. The distance, we want that around four. The size around seven, and just decrease that a little bit to 30. So we have this right here, as you can tell. It just kind of makes it so the text pops out a little bit more. I think 40 is good. Um, you can change the angle if you want. Uh, I don't really care how this is. I like to keep it at 90 and then use global light is checked. So click OK. Now to create that little thing that I did here, all you have to do is go to the pen tool. We're going to go ahead and create a layer on top of everything. Make sure it's a transparent layer. And then we're going to go to the uh, pen tool, which looks like this. Select that. Push P on your keyboard if you don't, if you can't find it. And then from here, all we have to do is just kind of guess to however you want this to be. Usually I like to go a little bit like this. So it kind of goes small and then big on this side and then just close the path. Right click inside of the closed path and click fill path. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and choose a color. Usually I like to select this color here so everything has a color scheme. So we're gonna go ahead and click use color and then we're gonna drag the color picker to the left so we can see and then we're gonna select this one here. So it should, it should sample the same color from our box um, stroke. And then keep everything the same and then click okay. And then hold shift command H or shift control H to hide the little Kind of line around it and then we're gonna make another one another one but we're gonna make this one a little bit smaller so make sure you're still on the same layer and then we're gonna go a little bit down kind of like this and we're pretty much done so we're gonna go ahead and go to fill click ok shift command uh, h and then now we have these two little cool diagonal lines diagonal lines <laughs> and then from here we're just gonna go ahead and copy this so hold shift uh, or alt, I meant alt or option, and just drag that over, and then we'll make a copy. Now we have to press command T to actually flip this to the other side. So click flip horizontal, and that will flip it to the other side. Press command enter, and then just drag this to the left. So that's pretty much how you do this. And also guys, if the background is a little bit distracting, especially because if it's a pattern or something like that, you could actually just create a blur. Even if I add a blur to Gaussian blur or whatever, it won't affect it because it's a pattern. So what I'm gonna do for this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and import a picture. Cool, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, drag this. Actually, let's just uh, decrease the opacity. Because we have the background layer and it's at 100%, we can just decrease the opacity so it's going through this here and we're gonna take off the pattern. So now it's just to our dark gray color. And then we're gonna go quite dark, not 100% dark, but about 8% is good and if it's distracting all you got to do is go to filter go to blur and then go to Gaussian blur for this I think four pixels will work you could do two if you don't want it to be too blurred out or you can go even nine if you like this kind of design here I like to keep it around three and then click OK and this is your final design so once you're ready to export this all you have to do is go over to file and click save for web Oh, I also forgot, before you do this though, we want to make sure that we copy the drop sh the shadow onto the boxes because then it's going to look, it's going to give it that like levitating effect. We're going to just go ahead and just add a drop shadow because then it'll just change everything. So we had this at 40, 10, I believe, was it 10? I think it was 7 and or 6. Cool. And then we click OK. The final finishing touch is to add a outer glow and this will just give it like a little a little pop you know so we're gonna go ahead and select uh, multiply so it's not too strong the color we're gonna change that from white to usually a red will work you can do any other color and I like to go a little bit darker and then click OK and then make this at 100% actually go normal so you could actually see this and then the noise, just keep everything the same. Here you can change the size to however you want. Um, I think going a lot is just uh, it's not that good. So I think around uh, 10 would be good. You could do softer or precise, depending on how you want it. I like softer, so just so it's not too strong. And you can change the opacity to, I'm gonna just keep it around 50%. So yeah, and then click okay. And then now you have this little cool, little out like outer glow, which looks really, really cool. You could also apply this to the text. 
but white on red will wouldn't look so good on this so just keep that in mind you also want the text to be a separate color from the rest of the color scheme if you want so yeah that's pretty much it for this video until then peace out take care and enjoy your day